I'll let my friends among true scholars of literature fight their own corner. Reverting to science, I'll simply suggest to cultural relativists who may be here that next time they want to travel to an international conference of like-minded critics, they board a magic carpet rather than a Boeing 747. And next time they have a mortal illness, they should visit a shaman or a gully gully man rather than a doctor. The Golden Gate Bridge stays up because a lot of scientifically trained engineers got their sums right. No other kind of engineering will do. If you want something to work, science is the only game in town. But because science is useful, there's a danger we shall run away with the idea that useful is all it is. The very usefulness of science has diminished its reputation and influence. Clever scientists understandably become sucked into positions where their useful knowledge can be exploited, with the result that clever non-scientists end up doing the only thing that's left, running the show. It doesn't follow that their non-scientific education makes them better qualified than scientists to run the show. Yet this non sequitur is widely believed with predictable effects on the industrial health of various countries. As a further consequence, precious scientists are lured away from the honorable profession of teacher. A vicious spiral with fewer bright children being inspired to take up science fuels the damaging legend that a science education makes us less witty, less sparkling in conversation and writing, less articulate. I have occasionally heard a classical or literary colleague talk science more interestingly than some scientists. But I have never credited this to their non-scientific education. Rather, my reaction is, if they can talk so intelligently when they don't know any science, just think what they could achieve if they did. One could make a similar point about the dearth of great music or art that science has inspired. Yes, the St. Matthew Passion is a towering piece of music. So just think of the even greater heights Bach might have soared to if he had been commissioned to write an oratorio on the theme of evolution or the Milky Way. Never forget, by the way, that the most important step in any scientific or, ma or mathematical investigation is the leap of conjecture, the creative, even aesthetic inspiration that owes more to art than to cold logic. The heavens are indeed awe-inspiring. Who can look out at the Milky Way, what Carl Sagan called the backbone of night, without feeling a frisson, a tingling up their own vertebral column? To quote Carl Sagan again from his book, The Demon-Haunted World, not explaining science seems to me perverse. When you're in love, you want to tell the world. This book is a personal statement reflecting my lifelong love affair with science. For those that love language, those that want to write good literature as well as read it, let me propose science as the ultimate vehicle for fine writing. What theme could be nobler than the universe, its instantaneous point origin and majestic expansion, the vastnesses of deep space and deep time, and the apparently designed intricacy of deep complexity, evolved life. One of our leading physicists, Stephen Hawking, has labored to capture his subject's profundities in a simple book. A legendary bestseller on a towering subject, perhaps the deepest subject a book ever had. But among the eight million that bought the book, have you met one who's read it to the end? Removing all equations isn't enough, and it shouldn't be necessary. You have to love the instrument of language and know how to play it. Like Peter Medawa, or like Peter Atkins, who begins his book, The Creation, with this haunting cadence. I shall take your mind on a journey. It is a journey of comprehension, taking us to the edge of space, time, and understanding. On it, I shall argue that there is nothing that cannot be understood, that there is nothing that cannot be explained, and that everything is extraordinarily simple. He ends his book with the inspired line, comprehension is moving over the face of the earth like the sunrise. 
Yes, we need scientists because they know useful facts and can evaluate evidence, but mostly we need scientists to make that line come true.